Hello. So, um, I'm going to show you how to do uh, animation via spline creation as quick as I can here. So, here we go. Um, yeah, how's it going? Uh, anyways, so what we do is we... Oh, nope, we don't do that. We right-click and we say new blueprint class and we're going to make it an actor. And I'm going to call this spline animation actor. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh yeah let me set this over here sorry my apologies about the momentary anyways we open her up and here we have this so first we click on add new component and we say spline and then we go down to utility and say spline and then also we're going to add a component and we're going to give it a cube just as something so here's a cube you know and there's your spline hooray and then we jump over to the construction script and uh, not the construction script, the event script, graph, words. Um, <laughs> anyways, on event begin play, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start a timeline. So I'll say ti add timeline. Doesn't matter what its name is. You can call it what you want. Um, and then you double click on the timeline to open it up. You click this little F in the top corner to add a new track. And we'll call this like animation alpha just because we can. Um, the length is five, that's fine. You can set it to whatever you want. You add a key at the beginning, that is at zero, zero. And you add a key at the end of the time, so time five, that is at value one. So it just goes from zero to one, and it's a very straightforward timeline. So next up, we wanna make sure it plays it from the start, not from the middle. Um, so uh, now the thing we're gonna wanna update is this cube's location in space. Now the question is, so obviously we will have set world transform, if I can spell set world transform, like so. And this is the thing we're gonna wanna be updating via this timeline. However, to get those values, we first want to drive, bring in the spline as a reference, and we're going to say, um, how's it go? We want to get the spline's length first, because we don't know what that's going to be. We're going to create that later on. So we'll say get length, but whatever it is, uh, length, get spline length. There it is. Yeah. And then um, as the animation alpha goes from zero to one, well, we're going to animate along the length of the spline. So after the length, we say multiply float times float, and we plug in the animation alpha. So now we're going to get values that start at, at the beginning of the length and go to the end of the length. And that way it's a percentage thing, you know, 0 to 100%. And then what we want to do, um, also on this world transform, it's going to be asking for a tr new transform. So we want to drag off of it and say, make transform. So here's where we need to plug values in to give to the cube. Anyways, back to the spline. Now that we have the spline and somewhere along its length animating from this timeline, what we want to do is um, drag also off of this spline and say, uh, get location. Uh, at distance along splines because we know the distance and now we want to get the location. So we drag this distance into here, like so. And there you go. So you can see the connections. Um, and then instead of local, because we're going to want to be able to move this actor around, we can say world. So under coordinate space, switch it to world. Now, also along with this, we want to say um, get rotation at distance along spline because we want it to the square to be able to bank and rotate with everything so now we drag off that distance and plug it in here and then we also set coordinate space to world so again wherever the actor is it's going to inherit that and place it properly so then we just say get location plug it into the location and we get the get rotation, plug it into the rotation, the scale we want to stay the same, and that should do it. So now, back over in the world, um, if I put a spline actor out here, 
And see how there's that little nub pointing off the end of it? Well, I'll just rotate it so we can see it a little better here. So that little nub, um, I can even like copy this. And this little nub, when you click on it, it, op it allows you to start doing a oops, spline editing once you get a hold of it, right? There it is. So um, yeah, you just gotta kinda click around until you get a hold of that little tiny endpoint. So this is the endpoint of the spline. And being that each creation of this actor out here is an instance, you know, I can go ahead and edit this and it's not going to change the actor in here um, or the original actor length, you know. So, um, but what we can do now is I can right click on this spline path here and say add spline, spline point here and hooray, I can edit stuff. Um, also off of the end, if I hold down the alt button and left mouse click drag, it'll grab another one and drag it off, uh, making it longer. Also very important on the spline paths is if you right click on it and say visualize roll and scale. Well now we can see the path. And so say at the bottom here, we wanted it to, you know, bank this way real quick before uh, coming down. Well, we just rotate it like that. And so now it's got, you know, a little bit of a bank here that it's gonna follow. So yeah, so now that we have our spline path built, um, all we should have to do is save and hit play and there she goes and she goes Rip. and that's in a place to the end and so yeah that is a, a really super short uh, explanation of uh, how to do a spline animation on an object um, as an additional tip what I did for actors in the uh, game I'm working on right now I had one actor that created splines so i'd go out draw a bunch of splines using that actor and then the actor who travels along those splines well i'd have it go out look for all those spline actors that have a travel and then snap itself to that one and follow that spline so anyways just mostly important remember the commands get spline length uh, get location at distance along spline and get oh get location at distance along spline and get rotation at distance along spline so and then uh yeah also set them to world so there is uh there is that and you see the other ones animating too but anyways hopefully that's helpful and uh, hopefully that answers uh, uh quickly a uh, question for some of y'all so anyways hope all is well out there and i'll uh, see you next time <laughs>